Good morning, everybody. It's Pastor Lenny. Pastor Lori. Mm. And we are so very blessed to again be able to be with you yet another time. This is our greatest source of joy outside of spending time with each other and the Lord spending time with you guys. We love you. And uh, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And I know Pastor Lori feels that in the bottom of her heart. Do you have anything you want to say real quick? Guys are awesome. <laughs> awesome. Ama amazing. We thank you for your... Beyond. We thank you for all your, your cards and letters and emails and um, all that you do for us. We thank you for your um, financial offerings or financial blessings. Without them, this ministry ministry could not flow and grow. You know, like Pastor Lori always says, your God's hands God. extended. extended yeah. And we thank you to those of you who give. We thank you. And for those of you who are looking how to give, we just put it up on the board. That's the simplest and easiest way. It's the text to give phone number. And um, uh, many people use that. Also, many people um, just mail. They mail, they mail their gifts and offerings, and that is the, uh, the ministry's mailing address. So whatever way you choose, you know, we, sh we showed you how to do that, and we thank you ahead of time. We truly appreciate each and every one of you. So now we get that out of the way. So now, <clears throat> this is part two, um, and I've been talking about my, my healing experience because this past week was my th my three year anniversary, my three year anniversary from being um, healed of a cancer that was supposed to, you know, take my life, supposedly. And I was given six months to live, and uh, well, you can see it's three years later, and we're still here. Amen. Amen. And we're going to be here for a lot longer. Amen. I'm going to see my grandbabies get married. Amen. I'm going to dance with them at their wedding. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. And so we've been sharing a little bit about um, my testimony. So th this is going to be part two. And one of the things I wanted to share right off the bat is because part one sounded like I was promoting, you know, the doctor. Almost, right? Almost sounded like I was promoting go to the doctor. But that's not what I was promoting. Because, you know, Pastor Lori, you were healed of, what was it called? Colonic inertia. Colonic inertia. And that's where, you know, your entire large intestine shut down. Mm -hmm. And your the only remedy was... Surgery. Sur surgically remove your entire large intestines. And... Pastor Lori didn't know how or, or, or if it would, it would be healed, right? You really didn't know at that point in time. No. But you knew no, no surgery. No. And we thank God for that. Because to this day, 10 years later, 12 years later, 14 years later, she still has her large intestines. Um, so we're not saying, you know, do not have... Uh, we're not saying go to the doctor, you know, we're not saying get it surgically removed. No, no, we're not. And um, there have been multiple healings in my life. Um, yeah, I, you, you remember that day um, we were at your mom's house. It was it was Christmas Eve. We just celebrated Christmas Eve at my mom's house. I went to your mom's house and I had that tremendous asthma, asthmatic attack. Mm -hmm. And you had all you can do to get me in the back seat of the car and drive me to Butterfield Memorial Hospital. I was I was scared. I mean, so I've been healed of asthma. No medical intervention. Healed of asthma. I had torn my left rotator cuff before this um, uh, revelation of, of healing that we have. And so I had it surgically repaired, but I tore this rotator cuff and it was miraculously healed. No medical intervention. I had a kidney stone. Boy, that, that talk about pain and um, no medical intervention. 
especially since I was scared. I did not want to, to go there and find out what the heck they were going to do to try to get me to pass a kidney stone. So it was easy to believe. It was easy to believe in God or believe for God for that, but miraculously healed. Rheumatoid arthritis, arthritis in my neck. Um, so many other things miraculously healed. Now, remember when I had COVID, you don't really don't remember how bad it was. That night you were asleep in the bed. And I had contracted COVID so badly that I actually, it's the, it's the only time I actually entertained the thinking, thoughts of, I wasn't going to survive through the night. You didn't know this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't really breathe. I, 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 everything I could do to just sip some air, and it was just so much pain in my chest throughout my body and it was so hard to breathe and with every step I took it hurt and I knew I'm not call, I'm not going to the doctor I'm not going to the hospital because that was early in COVID and I knew they would put me on a ventilator and anybody that they put on a ventilator usually did not leave that hospital so I I looked to the Lord my healer and he instructed me he instructed me he told me as much as it's going to hurt Len get out of bed go into the kitchen and take communion okay all right Lord I'll do it oh my goodness it hurt but I took communion thanking him for the union thanking him for the union yeah. See, because before he told me to do that, I wept and I said, Lord, I have to be, I have to be healed of this because that's the only way I can know I'm, I'm forgiven, you know, uh, just like the person that was on the mat, you know, you, you told him to rise, your sins are forgiven, take up your mat, rise up and walk, you know, so that you know that the son of man has power to forgive sins. He says, take up your mat. And then, and so this the sins was connected to the, the sickness or the disease so I, I had Lord I have to know I'm forgiven and so in order for me to, to know I'm forgiven I, I have to be healed Lord and he, he said take communion so I took communion I struggled back to bed and you were sleeping as peacefully as I've ever seen you sleep I think you were smiling just like that. Your face was glowing just like the face of an angel. Boy, you're beautiful. Thank God. Thank God for, for, for Pastor Lori. I thank God for Pastor Lori. But, um, and as beautiful she, as she is on the outside, she's a she's hundred times more beautiful on the inside. But um, I, I actually thought she would wake up a widow. But I listened, listened to the voice of the Lord. And I, I did as I was instructed. I heard his voice plain as day. Made it back to bed. In pain. I put the covers up to my neck. And you know what? I don't remember anything else. I must have felt right asleep. Must have felt right asleep. And I woke up that next morning. And the COVID was gone. Amen. So... Pastor, Pastor Lenny knows about miraculous healing. So now, and it's amazing, when I had the COVID, when you look at the timeline, that's when the cancer was on me too. Right. So I wonder if the immun immunities were so low or the COVID was so bad because it was also cancer. You know, I don't know. Or the cancer sprung up because of the COVID. I don't know. But... Um, um, it was at that time, you know, I'm aware of it now because of, of, of the symptoms that I had, that it was the cancer. Now, I didn't, I told you last, the last time we met, the progression, the progression of the, of the runny nose, the nasally discharge, the, the congestion and, and so forth and so on, and how it just kept pr progressing. And I was, I was standing yeah. I was commanding. I had the different leaders and different elders of the church come up, come up front, 
and I gave them the oil, the, oil, the anointing oil, and I, I poured it in their hands, and I said, put your hands on me, brother. Cast this out of me. And we called it sinusitis. Yep. In fact, prior to that, I was in Colorado, right? And let's see, Greg Moore, um, Mike Pickett, um, Carrie Pickett, um, Andrew Womack himself, right? And uh, Wendell Parr, they all were praying over me and prophesying over me and giving me, giving me words from the Lord. And one of those words Andrew gave to me was that I would be an evangelist. And he seen me as an evangelist, evangelizing, whatever. But I had cancer at that point. And, and it wasn't picked up. I didn't know. So it gets worse. I, I told you, you know, sleeping in another room, whatever. Finally having to go to a doctor. I just had to go to a doctor. I was led to go to the doctor. And I shared how how hard that was right because guilt shame and condemnation yes. you, you know what do you go to jesus when the doctor fails you know when you go to the doctor because jesus failed i mean this is a mentality i was in and it wasn't a good mentality yeah. you know and so we went um but but god gave me my word and this is what it's all this is what i'm leading up to medical non-medical doctor non-doctor surgery no surgery jesus and jesus only okay or medical intervention the most important thing i want to leave with you is listen to the voice be led and make sure you know you're being led by the holy spirit because if you're not led by the Holy Spirit and you haven't had the voice of God speaking to you, like he said, you will live, Len, and you will not die. I never gave cancer another thought after that word. You will not miss a Sunday service. Okay? You will not miss a Saturday school day. Uh, at, that at that time, I was a Karis instructor. And then number four, he just said, continue to proceed, proceed in peace. Okay. Now, for me, con continuing to proceed in peace meant continue the medical route. Right. And I had a problem with that. And thank God I told you the last time I reached out to Barry Bennett, and he said, listen, Len, life has been put, put before you, but proceed, you know, proceed. And, you know, proceed in that peace. We'll figure it out at the end. But take take life, because Jesus is the ultimate. He's the ultimate healer. So... That's what we did. Now, this is where I knew I was listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit and proceeding with peace. Because, you know, we were led to doctors outside of our area who the first, the, the first doctor had no history with this cancer that I, that I had, con, you know, that had come upon me. And so he put me into the hands of this other doctor, another specialist who, for 11 years, he dealt with, you know, the type of cancer that I had. He said, in fact, remember, Laura, he said, the clinic I worked in saw more, peop more people come through with this cancer than the entire United States does in a year. So he said, I know what it is. I know the markers. I know we're going to treat it. We're going to treat it and we're going to beat it. And then he told me, if you follow the program, I'm going to take that 98% chance of, of that you're going to die. You're not going to make it. And we're going to turn it around to, I'm going to give you a 98% chance that you're going to live. And I'm like, I started weeping and crying, and I'm like, okay, Lord. And, and in the back, in, in, the, in my mind, in my soul, I hear the Holy Spirit saying, keep following the peace. Keep following the peace. Now, remember what he told me that day? He said, listen, this is the program we're going we're gonna to put you on, chemotherapy, okay? And, 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 and supposedly, the, 
chemotherapy that I received, they no longer use. Right? The doc because the doctor said it's too harsh and people just couldn't handle it. And and they were just getting off because they couldn't handle it. It was I would fall asleep when it came time to receiving the chemotherapy. I, I was I was just resting, I was in peace. I in fact th during the first treatment, the chemotherapy treatment, I gained twelve or fifteen pounds, didn't I? You did. <laughs> right? Uh -huh. I, no, no, no vomiting. Was, no, you, you were fine with. I was eating. doing fine with it, you know, and um, but beyond that, then he was telling me then you were going to have to go through radiation. So he gives was he gave me three or four choices. The doctors, right? Mm -hmm. And um, not not only that, but four different locations. Right. Now, the one we ended up going to was the last one on our list. Because I know, Pastor Lurie, did you want to go to the city? Did you want to drive to the city? To the inner, inner New York City. No like way, right? Very inner. <laughs> no. So, so three of the other choices were kind of local. And he said, I have, I have, um, you know, faith in the, in, in the radiation treatments. Um, I worked well with them. So I have confidence in every one of them. Okay, but then he says, but if you were my father, can you imagine he said that to me? If I, you were my father, I'd have you go to Mount Sinai. Well, we didn't want to go to Mount Sinai because that meant the heart of New York City. And then he said, and if you were to go to Mount Sinai, oh boy, I would want you to see Dr. Marshall Posner. He's, uh, he is the absolute best. But even if you were to go to Mount Sinai, I can't guarantee you know, because there's so many oncologists there, it's, it's huge that you would get Dr. Marshall Posner. And then he said, um, and as far as the, the radiologist or the one that would deliver the, the, the radiation treatments or be in charge of that, her name was, um, I, I forget what her name was because she left halfway through, but Marsha, Marsha, whatever. And, and, and he said, and she's the best. Right. She's the absolute best. But you know, you can't guarantee if you went there, if you decided to go there, you would you would have them. So I'm going to contact all four hospitals and, you know, we'll see which ones get back to you. And then we'll take it from there. How many got back to me? Only one. Which one? Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai. The one we didn't want to get to. See, this is this is follow the peace and the Holy Spirit's leading, leading Mount Sinai. So he leads us to Mount Sinai. We go there on appointment, and who becomes my doctor? Dr. Posner. Marshall Posner. And he's become, he's, he, I love him. We've embraced, we've hugged, we've taken pictures together, you know, and uh, he moved from New York. Now he's in Tampa Bay. You know, if you're looking for a good oncologist, if you're heading in that direction, Dr. Marshall, pa Marshall Posner is the best. I'll give you the information, whatever. And then... Dr. Marsha, why can't I, I can't think of her name. She was the, in charge of the radiation treatments and whatnot. And I'm like, wow, Lord, you close the other doors, you left this one door open, and you're giving me the best. But now I didn't know how big of a miracle this was and how much of a leading by the Holy Spirit it was until three or four months ago. Remember when we were talking to Dr. Michael Yao and we were talking about the proton radiation? He didn't like it. He said, oh, is that what you had? Because I'm not, I'm not, in, I'm not too much in favor of it. I don't, I don't believe it's necessary. What? Now, remember, remember that also he was telling me about the program and he was telling me about this marine that he had. Right. Mm. And it's been three years. And he was still and he was still in bad shape. Recovering. He was still in bad shape. And he was telling me, this is gonna knock you off your feet. Yep. And he was a, a marine, this guy. And and he said, right, he said and he was working out and getting strong. Because even he knew he was gonna go through this, so he was trying to get stronger before all the right. events. See, now, I didn't know the, 
side effects of radiation treatments and chemo general radiation treatments i didn't know <laughs> but when i got to mount sinai following the peace right yep. here's what you can't tell me this this wasn't a leading of the holy spirit and 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 and, and a miracle and miraculous you know listening to the voice of the holy spirit see that's the difference between this time in my life and other times in my life so they put me on the radiation treatment but it wasn't at mount sinai's radiation center right. which would be typical which was the radiation that this gentleman that the dr yao was telling me about that ha he hadn't recovered after three years yeah the cancer was gone but he was a mess right. but yes Dr. Marshall Posner and Dr. Marcia. Oh, I wish I could get her name. But anyway, they did not recommend me to general, general radiation treatments. They sent me to the New York Proton Center where I received proton particle beam radiation treatments. That was significantly different. Significantly different because it wasn't an overall radiation treatment. Listen, I had a tumor approaching my brain that they warned me, and a tumor approaching my optic nerve. And they were warning me, listen, if you stop, if you start seeing double, if you start, you know, double, triple, you know, if you start losing your balance, man, you, we got to get right. You got, because I said, listen, I don't want to go through these. I want, I want to have Thanksgiving and I want to have Christmas. And they said, okay, but if you start seeing double, you know, or you start start losing your balance. And um, I said, okay. I did lose my hearing in one ear. But so the thing about it is ge six tumors, general radiation, that close to my brain, right? My eyes. I could only imagine what you feel like. The dangerous side effects, you know. But yet the Lord led me to the New York Proton Center and Dr. Yao didn't prescribe it, but doc, Dr. Marshall Posner did. And it's more of a pinpoint and it gets right to the location. So in other words, the tumor that's approaching my brain, it gets to that tumor, but it doesn't go to the brain. Mm. Praise. And now I'm done with all my treatments. I never got, you know, throw it up, vomit. They would call me up, right? They would call me up and say, Pass, you know, they, they didn't say pass. They said, Mr. Rolla, we're just checking up on you. Are you having any kind of suicidal thoughts? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? No. Nope. Oh, they, right? And they said, well, Mr. Rolla, believe it or not, it's quite common. I said, no. No. You know, and I told them, when I get to the Proton Center, I fall asleep. I'm at peace, you know, and um, there's so much more. But 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 the, but the thing is, you know, and, and then the, the, the tumor that was by the optic nerve, if you're getting general radiation, it's going to affect your eyesight. Pinpoint, pinpoint. I thank God. That wasn't even in Michael Yao's plan. He would have had me go to another doctor. If, if the other hospitals would have accepted me, I would have went to another, another hospital. I would have had general radiation. I don't know what would have happened as a result of that. But because I listened to the voice of the Holy Spirit, he led me. Every time it would come time for a treatment, I would say, Holy Spirit, do I get on the table? And I would hear him say, proceed with peace. I said, okay, I would praise and worship him. It got to the point where ever, when I entered uh, my chamber to receive uh, the, the radiation treatments, that the staff would have Christian music playing for me. And all of a sudden, after a couple of days, because I used to go there, we went there every day. Next, I'm raising my hands to pray. And the next thing I know, I have hands everywhere on me. And I'm like, they're praying with me. They're praying. One time at the, it was getting to the end, and I was, I was just so pumped and excited. I was jump, jumping on that table because I knew it was like just a couple of more days, and I forgot to pray. And 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 I was getting on the table, and one of the technicians said, "Mr. Roller, well, you can't get on that table." I said, well, "What was the matter?" He said, "He said to me, we haven't prayed." 
And Lori and I, we ministered to people. We prayed for people. We seen people healed that we prayed for. You know, and to make a long story short, I rang the bell. I completed the treatment. Within 30 days, I think, my daughter got married. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yep. <laughs> and boy, we had a we had a feast. It was a beautiful it was a beautiful occasion, a beautiful reception. And guess what? Pastor Lenny was able to eat all the food and enjoy all the food and taste all the food. Thirty days my taste came back. Taste came back. You know? You know, a month later, I was working out. I was doing stairs. I was walking, I was, uh, I was weightlifting, push-ups, sit-ups, um, um, what's the other thing we do, planks, taekwondo, and let me see, two months, I'm in Tampa Bay playing my 14, 15-year-old nephew one-on-one -on -one basketball, right? And I'm like, thank you. Not three years. Because I followed the peace. I listened to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And that's what this, this testimony is all, has all been about. Because, I'm, and I'll tell you, after I shared this the first time, a, a similar type testimony, I had people calling me. I had people writing to me saying, Pastor Lenny, I wish you would have given this testimony a year ago. My, my husband would still be alive. He refused to go to a doctor. And medically, he could have been helped. But he had this position, no, you don't go to doctors. By his stripes, I'm healed. I'm standing on the word. I believe. I have faith. Okay? And that's all good and dandy. But if you haven't received the word from the Lord, that's just mental assent. That's just your mind believing. And it's a different, it's different than hearing the voice of God that says, By my stripes you are healed. Believe that you receive because you are. Yes, Lord. And you know that you know that you know that you've heard that voice. Or you hear that voice of the Holy Spirit saying, You know what? Go to such and such a doctor. Go to such and such a doctor, such and such a location. All right, And you're led that way because you hear the voice of God. That's what faith is. Faith is hearing from God, hearing the voice of God, and then walking in agreement with Him. So Pastor Lenny, unlike, remember how I used to preach? I ain't going to a doctor. Right? Because if I don't go to a doctor, then I can't get the doctor's report. And if I don't have the doctor's report, it ain't coming on me. You know, that's that, that, that that's the that's the stand I I you know I took, and I I, I I preach it in such a way that it probably brought brought a lot of guilt, shame, and condemnation uh, condemnation to people who were, you know, going right, going to a doctor, or the medical route, medication, whatever, to get some kind of relief or or healing and. And you know what? They're all, they're all just instruments of God. And healing ultimately comes from God. The bottom line is, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and completer of faith. Keep hearing about the Christ, because faith comes by hearing and hearing about the Christ. Right? Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Right? Faith is energized by God's love for you. So when you're hearing messages about the Christ, the anointed one in the anointing, when you're fixing your eyes on Jesus, when you're fixing your eyes on his love for you, you're going to receive a rhema word. Amen. Amen? You have to. You, you're going you're gonna to hear that voice. And, and when you said something the last last time about his sheep but we're, we're his sheep he's the shepherd and the word says we can hear the sheep can hear the shepherd amen the word cannot be denied so you have to hear him yes well. my sheep know my voice and another they will not follow you know so what that means to me is my sheep know my voice i said proceed with peace so if you hear another voice that's telling you well you have no faith well, you have no belief, or else you wouldn't go that route. No, 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 no. My sheep know my voice, and I told my sheep to proceed with peace. 
See, follow the peace. Listen for the voice. And when you hear the voice, you believe in your heart, you speak with your mouth, and you proceed in peace. Now, if it's the medical route, you do so without any guilt, shame, or condemnation. Don't let anybody put it on you. If it's not, then you know, I heard his voice, his voice. Not the voice of man, not the voice of the preacher. The voice of God, I heard his voice. And you'll know it, and you'll be convinced of it, and you'll be at peace with it. And if he says, don't go that route, go here, stay here, receive communion, by my stripes, you were healed, then you do that. The bottom line is, proceed with peace, listen for the voice, and when you listen for the voice, and you proceed with his peace, under the leading and directing of the Holy Spirit, there will never be any guilt, shame, or condemnation. That only comes from man. So that's kind of the testimony I wanted to share. I hope it blesses some of you. You know, I, 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 I hope, I hope so. And if you know people that are facing similar situations, you know, share share the message because our message grows um, as you share it. You know, share our YouTube, Leonard Roller Ministries. Share this message. It's going to be on Leonard Roller Ministries. It's going to be on our Facebook channel. Share the message. People need to hear it. You know, so you have any closing words, Pastor Lori? Praise the Lord for hearing him and for the peace. And I would just say, if you're the caregiver, the person that's helping the, pers the other person, to worry about no thing. Mm. I never knew how much my peace mattered to you without a doubt I, I i didn't know that until much later without a doubt but the word um the word becomes so so awesome in that i knew i i could worry about no thing and i would say to myself a lot Lori, what should you worry should you worry about cancer C cancer seems like something you should worry about or be anxious about no worry about no thing nothing absolutely nothing and instead think about all the good Amen. and all the true and all the wonderful and all all that he really is he's righteous he's he's whole he's Amen. Healed. think about those things and then the peace that passes understanding that was will come and it did that was so say, so important to me if there was ever a day that there wasn't, I needed to talk to someone, there wasn't a wrinkle. Parents. There wasn't a wrinkle of worry or anxiety or anxiousness on your face. Oh, there was. Whenever you thought you would have to drive to New York City, <laughs> but thank God you never had to do it. Just once. Just once. <laughs> and you said, "Lenny, please get me out of the city, and I'll take over." I'll drive but that's that. I mean, that's it because this is New York City. That's a lot. That's a lot of stress too. But and then that's another thing. God gave me strength oh, to do it, I, and I don't know how. Because God is good. Got out of chemo or radiation, and there you were driving the streets, the inner streets of New York City. Amen. It's just a miracle after a miracle after a miracle after a miracle. Amen. So we hope this blessed you. Share it. Share it. Share it. There's people that need to hear it and need to be freed from a message like this. We love you. We'll see you again in a couple of days.